Hello and welcome back to Family Guy Explained on No Bullshit, where we recap, review, and explain the jokes and references of our favorite animated family. This time we're tuning into episode 7 from this, the 16th season. Called PD4, this episode covers Peter getting into it with the Russian president, Vladimir Putin. It's also a continuation from the previous episode, which we also covered here in our video, Family Guy Does Twitter Joke Policing. Link to that recap below if you want to catch up. But to put it briefly, in the last episode, Brian got into trouble for tweeting an offensive joke on Twitter. This resulted in him eventually moving out of the Griffin household, getting himself a little shitty apartment on the other side of town. I bring that up because this will be the first time Family Guy carries on some of its story into the next episode, so we're going to see how that plays out here today. And between that and the Russia-Putin stuff, I'd say we're in for a treat. Let's go ahead and get started. In the beginning, we get a quick little recap from the last episode, telling you the stuff I already said about Brian moving out, but the way they do it is quite funny. It's in the form of the Survivor reality TV show. They've got Stewie as a contestant tested on the beach and the family voting off Brian in the wooden shacks. And they even got the real host of Survivor to appear, wearing cargo shorts and sandals and all. The family has spoken. You know, you're the only man in America who looks good in sandals and cargo shorts. Good luck, everyone. I'll miss you. Next, we cut to Brian in his new but shitty apartment. His landlord is demanding the rent, but Brian's a little short. Short in height and in money, apparently. He calls the family for help, but there's no answer. Just their answering machine, which is a pretty outdated device, but the recording they have is rather interesting. Hello, you've reached the, the Griffins! Griffins! See that? I told you we should have rehearsed this. Lois, can we do it over? No, that's eight times. Just leave a message. I'm sorry. Without help from the family, Brian decides he needs to get a job. Fortunately, he knows he could do something for work. He's not good for nothing like Ringo. This leads to a cutaway about the band The Beatles, where Ringo Starr mentions how the Sgt. Pepper's album cover won't look good on a CD. Ringo, are you from the future? Yeah, and I outlive two of you. Which two? Yeah, come on, Ringo, tell us. Okay, but you all have to agree to do my song about the octopus. Hey, before you tell us, I'm gonna go and smoke a thousand cigarettes. And I'm gonna move to New York City and walk in and out of my building. This, of course, also references the two Beatles' deaths. Harrison, who died from throat cancer from smoking, and Lennon, who died from a gunshot in New York City. Tragic endings to both their tales, but they led good lives and left us with tons of great music. Next, to celebrate Dolph Lundgren Day, Peter and his friends decide to watch Rocky IV, a movie in which Dolph plays the Russian fighter who battles Rocky at the end. Rocky IV is a classic Cold War era film that is often used to epitomize the conflict between Russia and the USA. And that's why, of course, Family Guy is bringing it up here. Russia versus the United States is pretty relevant in this era of everyone accusing Russia of rigging our election, and we'll get to all that soon. Unfortunately though, the guy's DVD of Rocky IV isn't working. Peter tries blowing on it, which is an old trick for Nintendo cartridges and DVDs sometimes maybe, but this doesn't work here. Getting desperate, they realize they have an Apple TV they could try, but no one knows how to work it. There are no buttons on the Apple TVs after all. Joe tries voice commands and yells at it, but that doesn't work either. This results in the guys going to the store to get a new copy of the movie, but there ends up being another hiccup in their plan there as well. Apparently they can only find a Russian version of the movie, but they decide to watch it anyway. Things seem okay enough until they get to the ending, which was changed a bit from the American version. And Balboa is down! Drago wins! What the hell? Son of a bitch! Those rusky bastards changed the movie so Drago wins! Yeah, Rocky gets up! This outrageous change enrages the group, resulting in Peter writing a rather scathing email to Vladimir Putin, the Russian president of course. He says their changed ending of the movie is wrong because any American can beat any Russian in a fight, always and forever, but Peter will soon regret saying that, as you'll see. But before we get to that, they have this funny cutaway that goofs on Captain America Civil War, the movie, which they instead call Captain America Civil Union. Who do we have on our side? Well, Hawkeye, we've got you, Scarlet Witch, the Falcon, and of course, Randy. Who's Randy? You know Randy, lives in my guest house. We've been friends since college. He's my pal. He's the guy I went to Paris with. You are such a coward. Randy! Next, Putin actually shows up to confront Peter, but first he asks to use the bathroom since he just George breaded himself in the airplane. Vladimir Putin? Duh. Where is bathroom? I George bred myself on plane. Gross. You can Google that during the commercial. Lucky for you, we don't have to watch those commercials here, and you don't need to Google that reference yourself. I've got that covered. George Brett was a Major League Baseball player who has a pretty infamous story about him shitting his pants on an airplane, which is what Putin was alluding to. After the break, Putin challenges Peter to fight in order to prove him wrong about Americans always beating Russians. You're gonna beat up my husband? Unless he American chicken. Did you just call me chicken? Yes, chicken. 
Fikrei! 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 Sound different in Russia. This chicken reference is from the Back to the Future movies, where Marty, the main character, can't stand being called a chicken for some reason. I guess that was a big insult back in the 80s. Next, Peter and Putin fight it out in the front yard, but Putin, like the shifty Russian he is, he doesn't like to fight fair. <laughs> You had enough? There you go. Peter! Oh, looks like Putin's phone is buzzing. And this, of course, references Trump's grabber by the pussy comments, which were all over the news last year and are still brought up today. It's also hinting at the idea that Trump and Putin are best buddies. They're texting each other, which I really don't think is true. I think Trump and Putin just have mutual respect for each other, which of course starkly contrasts Obama, Hillary, and the Democrats in their antagonistic approach to Russia. It might seem like Trump and Russia are best friends after all that. Also, people like to act like Trump and Putin are besties in order to make this idea of collusion between them more believable. It's all utter nonsense sense, of course, but I do think Family Guy joking about it is rather funny right now. Meanwhile, Brian still struggles with money. Luckily, he's found a job at a suicide prevention center, answering phones. I wonder if he answers calls going to that number Logic sings about in his suicide song, which we saw in the Grammys. I doubt it, but that'd be pretty funny. Missed opportunity there. Well, Brian just got his new job, and he's already hitting on his co-worker, who he asked to go Netflix and grill with him. Suicide is not a 9 to 5 problem. Yeah, so I was thinking maybe we could Netflix and grill. I think it's Netflix and chill. Oh, good, because I don't have a grill. Back to Peter, who is at the bar still bruised up from his fight. Putin shows up there, and now it appears the two have become fast friends. I'm up for this strip club. Great. Who's driving? You know, you're going to think I'm crazy, but it's such a nice day, I was kind of thinking of taking my shirt off and riding a horse there. Get out. This, of course, references Putin's famous pictures of him riding a horse shirtless on his vacations in Russia. And I gotta say here, Putin is pretty badass. Say what you want about the guy and his KGB background and unending presidency, but Putin? This guy? He fucks. His vacation pics always got him hunting, shirtless, and just in general being a badass. He looks cool as shit to me. Peter and Putin's new friendship continues. Putin even invites Peter to come back to Russia with him. Peter resists at first, but then he gives in when he realizes Bridget Nielsen is in America and coming to get him. Wheels up, let's go! Oh my god, she can smell the tiny bottles of booze. We gotta go! We gotta go now! Nielsen is another actor from the Rocky IV movie who played a Russian as well. The funny thing is, her and Dolph Lundgren are most known for playing Russians in that movie, but neither of them are actually from there. Nielsen is from Denmark and Dolph is from Sweden, but I guess those iconic roles in Rocky IV really stick with you. Upon entering Russia, Peter begins to take in the sights. Firstly, he noticed how all the girls there are either super attractive or completely repulsive. They're all tens and ones, as he puts it. Next, Peter asks about the TV options at Putin's palace, of which it seems they always have lesser options options than the American ones. You got HBO? We have stars. You got ESPN? We have Fox Sports 1. Does that come in HD? 420p. You got everything you say, I say something little bit worse. You got Simpsons? We have Family Guy. I did it to myself. That's some nice self-deprecating humor from Family Guy right there, who of course not only share a lot of similarities with their older rival The Simpsons, they also are on the same network, Fox. And while I think most would say Simpsons is a superior show, it's more hallowed and legendary, I honestly think Family Guy has held up better recently. I used to watch The Simpsons as a kid. The original seasons are classics, but over the years they've become tired, watered down, and played out. If we're being honest, I can't even watch Simpsons anymore, but Family Guy I still keep up with every week. But that may just be me and my taste though. Brian's side story continues at his new job. After flirting with his girl co-worker doesn't pan out, Brian proceeds to stalk her Facebook for some pics he can get off to. Unfortunately for him though, the girl returns and catches him beating off to pics of her at a funeral. Awkward. Following this mishap, Brian's worried he will get reported by her and fired, so he decides to try and get her fired first by planting drugs in her desk and ratting her out. Back to Peter. After having dinner, Putin decides to show off his command center, where he claims he rigs all the elections. But Peter's not too impressed by this. Over here is where we rig every American election. Eh. Also, American football. What? No! Is true. That's right. Not only is Russia rigging American elections, they're also rigging our beloved football, which many probably care about more than politics if we're being real. There's even a funny ban Tom Brady button there. But this football bit is too much for Peter. It enrages him. This is the last straw. Peter's pissed, so he challenges Putin to another brawl. In the end, Putin and Peter face off in the boxing ring, reminiscent of Rocky IV, of course, the movie from the beginning. Putin looks like he's in much better shape than Peter too, who the announcer mistakenly calls Kevin James, a similar-looking hefty actor, famous for 
for Paul Blart Mall Cop in King of Queens. But before the two can finish their fight once and for all, Lois steps in and halts the fight to have a word with Peter. She turns out to be a vision though, something in Peter's mind. It seems he's seen things since he was hit in the head so many times. Either way, this prompts Peter to end the fighting and find another way for America and Russia to settle their differences. They're going to settle it through song and dance. Things close rather romantically, at least they look that way. But despite the happy sounds, in the final words, Peter describes how he was poisoned by Putin on his way home, in the end proclaiming, and that's our president's best friend, further playing on that narrative that Trump and Putin are buddy buddies. But I think Family Guy gets that this isn't really true, and that's clearly why they're joking on it so much. All in all, this was another solid episode for Family Guy. Not the best, but certainly not bad or forgettable either. I like the jokes and the lambasting of Russia and the whole Russia rigged election narrative. It was a pleasant surprise to see Family Guy jump in on this joke, much like how South Park goofed on it in their season last fall too. And I do find it interesting that they'll make a whole episode about Putin, but hardly even mention Trump this season. Maybe it's for the best, but I'd love to see a whole Trump episode at one point, or at least a few more jokes and gags. This episode had a few, like the grabber by the cat emoji text, but I think there's plenty more to play with here. What do you guys think? Was this America vs. Russia episode pretty hilarious? What do you think of Family Guy's portrayal of Putin? Would you like to see more of Trump on their show too? And what about this Family Guy Explains series. Would you guys like more Family Guy episodes covered? I don't mind going into the more political ones like this and the Twitter one before, but I don't think I'm going to be reviewing every episode like we did for South Park. There's just too many Family Guy episodes and some are totally random and unreviewable. I could also go back and do some more South Park episodes too, if that's what you guys want. I could review some of the classics and the best episodes or maybe go over last season. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. And thanks again for watching No Bullshit. It's been a pleasure and an honor serving you today. We'll see you all next time.